Hello, and welcome to tonight's episode of Quarantine Cooking with Amanda. Today we're doing one of my favorite things, which is fermenting. Fermenting is a healthy way of preserving foods and having them last a long time. I just did a video on canning tomatoes, which is one, one way to preserve. The great thing is it's super easy, doesn't take a lot of time, and the end result is delicious. Delicious, 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 so good. And it's a food packed with all kinds of great yummy biotics that are great for you. So we're gonna jump right in. I'm gonna show you how to make one of my favorite things to ferment, which is onions. So the first thing you wanna make is a brine. Super easy. We're gonna take water and salt and mix it together. So I measured out one cup of water, which is about 220 grams, and I'm gonna make a 4% brine. So that means that 4% of my water will be salt. Um, I did a 3% brine last time and I just, I didn't love it. I really liked it for my kraut, but not for the onions. So today we're gonna up it up to 4%. So we're just gonna measure out, well I've already weighed this out, but to give you an idea, this is about one big tablespoon, about 10 grams of salt. So we're gonna mix that into one cup of water and we're gonna stir it up and we're gonna make a brine. There's all kinds of ways to, pre to preserve foods, like with um, sodium benzoate and all kinds of terrible, bad food preservative preservatives. Salt is a natural way of preserving your foods and actually makes it healthier. So our next step, now we made our brine. So we have our salt water brine and you also want to taste it. Hmm. So I, my super awesome fermenting friend Ashley says that people will recommend taking making their brine taste like seawater salty. She personally doesn't like that. This is salty, but not seawater. This is gonna be great. Okay, our next step is to prepare what we are fermenting. So today we're doing onions, and I have half a red onion, so that's what I'm going to ferment. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just use what you have. So this is a great way to go to the store less, and also use food you have and have it not spoil. So I'm just gonna slice this into eh, as small slices as I can get it. Pretty little rings. And actually, I might not even, nah, we'll just do the whole thing. I have more. Whoa. My other fa favorite thing to ferment is kraut. So it's a pretty similar process, and if you want to learn how to make kraut, let me know. I have some cabbage and I can make a video. So I have sliced up my onion, and since some of it was a half, well, we're just gonna give them a nice slice down the middle. So then we're gonna fill our jar with onions. Just put them all in there. It's gonna be great. It's going to be great. If you haven't fermented before, today is a great day to start. You can ferment all kinds of things. Green beans, garlic, carrots. I did carrots before and I really like them. So when these are done, I eat them straight out of the jar because I love onions. You can put them on a sandwich, on a salad, in a soup, on a piece of bread. I mean, there's it's just all kinds, of, all kinds of ways that you can enjoy them. I did white onions and they came out pretty good. So that's it, we're gonna fill our jar with onions and then we are going to pour in the brine and you want your onions or whatever you're fermenting to be completely under the water. And I honestly put a little bit too many onions. We don't quite want it all the way to the top. That's it. So I'm going to get a lid or either take a cheesecloth with a rubber band and secure it over the top. Leave this on the counter for a week and then open up, taste it, and then store it in the fridge and enjoy. That's it. So that is how simple it is to ferment onions. That's it. If you have other requests of things you want to learn how to make, or if you have a pantry full of random things you don't know what to make, let me know. We will make something fun. Happy cooking and fermenting and stacking.